In this video, I'm just going to give you a quick overview of using Azure Data Factory with Snowflake in Bamulflex. So let me go ahead and set the scene here. We're going to have source data here, uh, including you know, Microsoft Dynamics. If you have you know, database sources here, we're going to use the Azure Data Factory copy command to land the data. Um, we also have uh, Azure, data, Azure Function Bridge that we've built uh, to interact with Snowflake. And we're going to land the data into Azure Blob Storage, um, into a Parquet file, and then using um, you know Snowflake uh, stored procedure code or you know standard stored procedure code, we're going to call the function bridge to load the data into the Snowflake database or persistent staging, um, stage data, uh, and or persistent staging the data there. So now the data is sitting into in a Snowflake database right over here, and then uh, effectively we can process the data into either data vaults or data march here again using Azure Data Factory and a function bridge. Um, one of the good things about uh, the Bimble Flex pattern is because all of our code is 100% standard Snowflake stored procedure code, you could also, if you wanted to, um, you know, orchestrate this side of things here using you know, standards and um, other orchestration tools, even the Snowflake load commands. One other thing that is uh, Bumbleflex offers um, that makes it uh, quite um, important for us to sort of do and use the full functionality from Snowflake is the ability to load parallel data. Um, so again, we get, we've got the data, let's just say you're working in a data vault or any other environment where you have source data coming at different intervals. And what you may want to do is uh, create a parallel process where you can load data. Now, Data Vault 2.0 is great for par parallel loading. Um, and what you can do there is, let's just say you've got one table here that's very big. You want to maybe run that on Compute Warehouse 1 um, and easily configure another Compute Warehouse where you may run some other um, ETL loads. So Bimo, within Bimoflex, we offer you the ability to split your batches up and run them on different Compute Warehouses if you want to, which is great for there. Um, let's go ahead and just show you Bimoflex demo of how to configure Snowflake. Okay, so this is obviously Bimbleflex, and within Bimbleflex, we've uh, in this version of Bimbleflex 2020, we've created a number of metadata samples for you. So we're going to be focusing on Snowflake and specifically Snowflake with Azure Data Factory. So if I drop this down here, somewhere down the bottom here, great. There's a Snowflake Azure Data Factory data vault. There's also one that's just uh, doing the data mart. So if you're going from source to staging and then straight into data mart using, you know, business views and stuff, you can use that one. But for the purposes of this presentation, we're going to use the data vault one here. I'm going to click that and I'm going to load that. So what we've done in this example is we've pointed um, uh, it at AdventureWorks LT 2012, as with all of our examples. We've imported metadata. We've done, done then done some data vault modeling here. Um, you know, build pointing timetables, build breach tables, and on top of those, we've built um, data mart tables, dimensions, and facts. Um, and so forth. Now, again, there are other videos that goes through the process of creating the data vault and the data mart specifically. Um, we're not going to go into that in great in detail right now, but let me take you through the rest of the configuration, what you need to do to make um, your solution for ready for Snowflake. So at a connection level, we have our source system here that is enabled for the cloud. You know, um, so it's already cloud enabled here. Um, then we've got our staging environment or our landing environment here. And as you can see, our landing, we're going to blob storage. Um, again, blob storage configuration is set up for Azure Data Factory link services. And then if I just look at, let's look at our staging environment here, you'll see that we've got um, ODBC based, SQL based. We've got a Snowflake data warehouse here as a system type. And then a link service down the bottom here called Snowflake. Now within Azure Data Factory, they don't actually have a link service called Snowflake. But in Bimbleflex, if you add, if you choose the Snowflake link service type, we then know that we need to use, you know, um, our function bridge that we've created to load the data. So it's very simple to configure it. So all you need to do here is just choose Snowflake, Snowflake, and now you've gone configured. So all of the rest of the connection settings and things like that is all standard as per our other demonstrations. You just have to pick Snowflake there and Snowflake here and then you know, the rest of the um, solution works the same. So it's very easy to convert your solution over to Snowflake. The last thing here is going to be Azure Data Factory. Um, just use the integration template as a Data Factory source to target. And then we'll go ahead and build this out. So let me just show you another thing here is if you had multiple batches here, you could actually set up multiple batches here and then configure them to different compute warehouses. All of the settings like, uh, you know, how many compute warehouses you want to use, whether you want to scale up or scale down the compute warehouses is all configured here in settings and they've documented on our website. 
but I'm going to go ahead now and just build all of this out for you and show you in Snow in Azure Data Factory and Snowflake what the result would look like. Okay, so I've uh, taken that metadata and I've built it out and deployed it to Azure Data Factory. So here's the output of it or the result of your solution. So inside of uh, you know Azure Data Factory, you'll have a batch here. And again, as I said, you could have multiple batches running on different compute or targeting different compute warehouses. The first thing we'll do here is we'll scale up. So you can scale up and this is a setting, an easy metadata setting inside of Bimoflex to say, you know, do I want to scale up my um, solution up to, or my compute warehouse, scale it up to extra large or large, uh, whatever you want to do. And at the end, you know, of the batch, and again, you can configure this in different, uh, in different ways, but at the end, I want to scale down because I've done running that compute warehouse, I might want to scale it, scale it down or even suspend it, right? So all of that is all built in using the Azure function at a copy command so obviously we're gonna that's just the batching calling the copies so if i could look at the copy here again i'll just uh, close that down so very simple orchestration here captures uh, sort of completions and uh, errors i look at the actual azure data factory pipeline or the copy command here um, we we have easily configurable parameters that you can do your high watermark lookups we copy the data into blob storage there. Again, we'll log some row counts that we want to, how many rows we'll extract it. Then what we will do is you will create the Snowflake stage pointing to the data factory. Again, this is configurable here. This is pointing to blob storage to get my Snowflake stage created for me. I'll process this and I'll show you the stored procedure in a second here. We run this the stored procedure that is gonna grab that data and load it into our, um, Azure data, uh, into our Snowflake database. Um, any errors will move the files to um, the files in, in, in error will move that to an error folder or will archive the files off because the next run those files have been processed so we'll put it in an archive folder and then we'll process our data vault again you, you have the, this is again a setting that you can say that during my source process I also want to process my data vault which will give you that great parallelism of running you know, a file end to end, running it, extracting the file, staging the file, processing it into persistent staging if you've switched that on, and then loading it into a data vault. So that whole file is then finished processing, you can move on to the next file, which gives you that great parallelism, especially when working with data vault 2.0. So the other stuff that is configured here is obviously we've got the batches here to load my data mart, you know, that's going to call again store procedures. I'm going to show you the Snowflake code in a minute. And if you wanted to run the data vault code uh, in the, independently from the source staging, you also have the batches here to run your um, data vault code, including your, and let me just show this here. There's my point uh, bridge table loads. There's my point in time table loads. So again, if you've got point in time tables configured for performance and bridge tables again for performance, you can have your point in time tables and bridge tables loaded too. And then you have your data mart sitting on top of your, your, your solution there. So, you know, uh, for Snowflake in Azure Data Factory, we support the entire uh, workflow there. Um, but let me go ahead and show you some of the Snowflake code. So in Snowflake, We've deployed all the tables here. So we've got all our tables. We've got some stage queries here. We've got our dimensions, our fact tables, our data vault down the bottom here. So all of the tables has been deployed using a table script that again, you can add into your uh, your, your source control and deploy that in, in whichever tools you use to deploy Snowflake with. Um, then we have our stored procedures here. We've got our, um, let's just have a look at a stored procedure here. Again, this is a data vault stored procedure loading directly from the Parquet file. So as you can see here, we've got all the, conditional formatting and everything set up there. Um, and then effectively, it's just, as you can see here, it's 100% standard Snowflake code here. So because all of our Bimoflex code is compiled into Snowflake stored procedures, you then have the ability here to, again, um, run with, with, you kind of uh, don't have any vendor lock in there. You, you have the ability here to run all of your code using whatever orchestration framework you want straight into there. So that's how simple it is to deploy a Snowflake um, solution using Azure Data Factory. Um, we have more detailed uh, videos about some of the more in-depth processes like building the deployment scripts and that kind of stuff on our website. Thank you for watching.